Hi, this is Dr. Tom Rogers coming to you on the Monday Morning Dictation. Uh, today I'm going to geek out a little bit on iodine. You know, I do a lot of work with thyroids, adrenals, insulin, any kind of hormone. That's what I really like to do. You know, I've t- kind of turned into a geek in that manner. And um, it's interesting about iodine. Now, let me introduce you to another probable geek like me. You've probably heard of him if you've read much about thyroid. This is Dr. David Brownstein. He's like me. He's a family doc out of Michigan. And he's kind of he's one of those guys that is the best of both worlds, a mixture of traditional and alternative medicine. I don't know him personally. I'll probably meet him someday. But he's probably like me. He's been practicing a long time, and he realized – or got frustrated with the way we are and the way we have to practice medicine nowadays. You know, you have a condition, you get labeled, you give a medicine for it. Guys like us, we kind of like to find out why. That's why we do integrative medicine. In fact, that's the definition of integrative medicine, find, trying to find the root cause of a disease, what we call a disease. But anyway, this guy, I've read a lot of his stuff in the past. He does, some of his other books include... Um, drugs that don't work and natural therapies that do, um, overcoming arthritis, overcoming thyroid disorders, salt your way to health, uh, the guide to dairy-free diet, the guide to a gluten-free diet, the guide to healthy eating, the miracle of natural hormones, uh, the soy deception, vitamin B12 for health. So I want to thank one of my PA's friend, Wilson, for loaning me this book because I definitely when somebody loans me a book I really kind of devour the book and I certainly did this one it's a great book I've read some of his other stuff about thyroid and I'm right on line with the way he thinks so in any event um, it kind of refreshed my memory about iodine you know there's a lot of controversy about iodine you know we were taught in medical school that you can't give iodine that causes thyroid cancer well not really. You know, that is rare as hen's teeth. As a matter of fact, iodine prevents many types of cancers. Um, so let's geek out a little bit. Iodine is number 53 on the atomic chart. It's element number 53. And that's important because later on when you learn what classification that iodine's in, it's in a classification called the halides or halogens. And it's interesting because some of the surrounding elements can influence iodine like um, fluoride and chloride and bromide and, you know, kind of toxic uh, elements that can really cause havoc with your body. I'll get into that in a little bit. But in any, any event, iodine is, I can't think of a another molecule that's more necessary for life. In fact, you couldn't live without iodine. Um, People think it's just necessary for thyroid, but actually every cell in the body needs it. Um, Iodine also is antibacterial, antiparasitic, antiviral, anti-cancer. I know a lot of the old time docs like my surgeon dad, they used a lot for prepping um, patients for surgery, and we use it on cuts and scrapes all the time. Still do use it for that. Um, but iodine is interesting because a third of the world's population lives in an iodine deficient area. Um, iodine is basically found in in seawater and seaweed, and a few other places, some kind of rocks, but mainly seawater. That's why people in Japan get plenty of it. They don't have near as much cancer as we do, or thyroid problems. Um, particularly breast cancer and prostate cancer. Um, the, the WHO will tell you that iodine deficiencies re- can result in the leading cause of mental retardation in the world, uh, goiters, increased infant and child mortality, and also infertility. Um, like I said, it's found in mostly in sea, sea water and seaweed. It uh, concentrates in every cell, but highest in the thyroid, breast, and ovaries. Um, think about goiters. If you've ever seen these pictures of, especially kids in the ni- early 1900s, they had these huge masses on their neck called a goiter. And what that is is an enlarged thyroid trying to make more thyroid hormone to exist. And these goiters were caused by 
deficiency in iodine. Think T4, T3. That's four uh, molecules or atoms of iodine and three molecules of iodine. That's all that means. So and it turns out that among these kids, especially with goiters, the girls had a lot higher inf- incidence of goiters. And think about it. If it concentrates more in breast and ovaries, boys don't have those. So in puberty, these girls were, were needing more iodine than the guys were. So they even had worse goiters. And what they found was, and the way they treated these, was iodine. So eventually, to overcome this pandemic of goiters and hypothyroidism, they started putting iodine in salt. And that virtually cured it. It became rare when they did that. Um, so that was a great thing, really. Um, but we, we'll get to why there's a resurgence of some of this stuff in the U.S. in a minute. But um, iodine is the essential ingredient. Um, in thyroid. I talk so much about thyroid and how it's responsible for your basic body metabolism. Um, But iodine is responsible really for maintaining the architecture and function of your thyroid. Also your ovaries, uterus, breast, prostate. And when deficient in all these, cancer can develop. Um, In today's world, we're seeing a lot more thyroid problems than we used to see. Why? Um, well, a lot of reasons. You know, we're all trying to cut down salt, so automatically we're, we're cutting down that iodized salt. Um, we're more exposed to that family of halides that I talked about a minute ago, like fluoride, bromine, chloride. Um, iodine is a halide that can be di- displaced by especially bromide and fluoride, which are toxic. Think fluoride and toothpaste and in your water supply. We used to think that they prevented cavities, but now we really know that they don't prevent cavities and actually can cause fractures and cancer. Read up the toxicity of fluorides. Bromine, uh, which really replaced iodine in baked goods because it was cheaper. And they also use it in medicines, pesticides, and pools. But what it does is displaces iodine and causes all the problems of iodine deficiencies. Um... Chloride, you know, the the oxidized form of chloride is chlorine, and it's a toxic thing. I mean, think of when you get in a hot tub and you inhale all the fumes. It can be toxic, and it's major. One of the major byproducts is dioxin, which is a major carcinogen. So think about chlorine. Another byproduct, perchlorate, is even worse. Think rocket fuel, and it's a major carcinogen. Even Splenda. Uh, it's chlorinated table sugar. That's why I tell people, please avoid Splenda. Um, low iodine levels are linked to lower IQs. Everybody knows that. It's also been linked to higher incidence of ADHD and autism. So you really need to think about iodine. Um, anybody really with a thyroid problem, chronic fatigue, or cancer should get your iodine levels checked. Um, The problem with checking your iodine, it's kind of hard to check sometimes. I think the best way to check it is called a 24-hour urine loading test. And what you do, you take 50 milligrams of two forms of iodine, and you collect your urine for 24 hours and see how much that um, you've excreted. If you excrete a lot, that means you don't have an iodine efficiency. Um, if you if your levels are low, then you definitely have an iodine deficiency. Now we we also do we do those in the office. We also do a um, urine dip test um, by ZRT Labs. We can actually do a spot check of urine R serum, which will give us a clue. So there's there's different ways to check this. It's just a lot of people just never think about checking iodine levels and. Really, I think almost everybody should probably think about getting these levels checked. Um, so there's a lot of things you can do. In fact, you can take iodine. You know, it's over the counter. It's inexpensive. The doses depend on how low you are and what condition you may have. Now, there's a few conditions where I would not give iodine. And I don't just indiscriminately go handing out iodine without checking the levels first and looking at your history. But I can tell you amazing stories where um, iodine's really changed a lot of uh, lives as far as fatigue, um, 
curing of fibrocystic breast, ovarian cyst, um, prostate nodules. Um, it's just amazing what a simple element like iodine can do for you. So what I suggest is you eat a lot of um, unrefined salt. I love the Himalayan sea salt, as you know. Um, selenium, magnesium, vitamin C, B vitamins are all important in the support of iodine. So the, the thing here is that you probably, if you have a thyroid condition or you just feel terrible or you've had cancer or dealing with cancer, you might, you might think about getting your iodine levels checked. You really don't have anything to lose. I'm not saying to go out and just start indiscriminately taking iodine, which you could do because you, it's over the counter. But, you know, uh, come to somebody that really knows their stuff about thyroid, adrenals, insulin, um, iodine that does a lot of work with hormonal medicine and actually trying to find the root cause of the problem. You know, we see so much problems with iodine now. The fact is we live in a very toxic world and those toxins can really affect all these hormones. So anyway, I hope this helps you a lot. Think about iodine. Uh, come into Performance Medicine. We'll be glad to check it for you. Um, any questions, please call or email us at performancemedicine.net. Thank you.